known as on blockchain and I'm sitting here with Nova Lorraine. Hi Nova, how are you? Hi, I'm good. Excellent, <laughs> excellent. So we are here in DC discussing blockchain, the metaverse, and but really my question for you Nova is how do you think blockchain is affecting financial literacy? That's an excellent question and I could, I'll start with my own personal experience. Mm -hmm. So was introduced to Bitcoin in 2013 mm -hmm. and it was a very different conversation then of what Bitcoin was or you mm -hmm. know at the time what it is um, but I was fascinated with this technology of blockchain and then having currency attached to this technology and following that through the years and then discovering Ethereum and then Dash and Litecoin and then XLM and all these other coins that really are the foundation, te foundational technology for the future of our financial system, of our, our economy, so to speak. And as I, I would say 2017, I, I dove into learning more about, about cryptocurrency blockchain as it relates to that side of things, the finance side of things. And in 2020, um, January 2020, I started day trading. Wow. Full time. <laughs> um, and it was with Play Money. And it was more of an educational experience. It was a way for me to nerd out around the technology. Um, I had to learn about it because how are you going to buy and sell something you know nothing about? And it introduced me to the, the semantics, the definitions, the use cases, the utility, the partners, you know, the future of. And the more I learned, the more fascinated I became. And then, you know, there's a thing, it, uh, a saying out there, like, if you want to learn about something, follow the money. Mm -hmm. And so it also was an eye-opener in terms of just the fiat system and how that's built and run and the pros and cons to that and how that ties into this new future of money and how both systems impact us and how the technology of blockchain is going to revolutionize our financial system. And when you talk about decentralized finance, when you talk about individuals being able to do tra transactions with each other directly, businesses reaching their consumers directly, storing our own money, managing our own, becoming our own personal banks, being empowered, but then also because we weren't taught that, you know, gone are the days where you're putting the money between the mattresses or in a hole in the backyard. Mm -hmm. It is it is empowering, but then for some, I've learned it's very scary as well. And so, one, I think it's enlightening individuals to not only the, the history of money, where it's going, uh, how this transparency of money is going to change how we transact with each other, not only that but then our supply chains how we do business it's going to give opportunities to individuals who had been shut out of certain industries or, or certain levels of economy mm -hmm. and when I started diving into decentralized finance oh my goodness I forget just the blockchain just forget collecting coins let's just say that forget but when, you, when you're empowered to learn about money in a way that's now mixed with technology and you have to get into the weeds, you have to go deep, that is empowering. And to know that you, it's another way of, of, of spelling out freedom in, in, mm -hmm. as far as I'm concerned. And to know that here's a, a tool that allows you to take the ceiling off of your finances, your the potential of growth and it is as as exciting as it is it's also terrifying <laughs> but it forces you to learn it forces you to know where before I think we we're blindly going to the banks where we're, we're you know trading and buying and selling without asking questions you know as artists why I'm only getting single digit returns from my art you know, it's it's forcing us to go deeper, see our worth, see our potential, and that's through this whole new mechanism called blockchain. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I agree with you, Nova. So what it sounds like you're saying is that given how the system works, 
Um, currently, it's just very easy to use, but blockchain, since it's more difficult to use, it causes you to get more education and at the end learn a lot more and deep dive because you have no other choice. Absolutely, and as you're deep diving, you may fall down the rabbit hole, but it opens your eyes to how connected everything is. True. And how very connected the technology is to our current fiat system, to our our minerals, or you know the golds and silver and all of that. These new technologies that are depending on this. You know, when I say new technologies, new innovations. You know. Um, beyond the blockchain that's now depending on this blockchain technology to advance it. And how do you fit into that puzzle? Mm -hmm. How does your business or how does your service or how does your art or how does your voice, how does your perspective, how will you be impacted by this? I think these are the questions that we all should be asking. You know, you don't have to become the next professor of blockchain. But to know it's here, it's not going anywhere, it's only going to continue to permeate through our society and how we do things. I agree, and I think given that we're still at a stage where, you know, getting into the ecosystem is difficult, I think people have to learn more. Absolutely, and it's, I feel education is critical, that's why I appreciate you and what you're doing with Women in Blockchain, and, you know, as you're going around the world speaking and sharing the programs you're creating, it's so needed because there's so much confusion and when you you know turn on the TV or whatever your your way of getting information a lot of it that's coming at us is either fear mm -hmm. or hype and it's not getting to the core of the real information what's needed who's needed to build this infrastructure this foundation with the best intentions in mind. Hmm. Yeah, I hear you and I think that's why it's important to have people who are building and teaching and also what you're doing and like you said different people questioning um, what they should be getting paid etc. So I think there's a lot there as well. Um, I really liked your comment about asking questions. So learning because you have to ask these questions. Absolutely. Like let's not blindly walk you know, through the woods, you know, let's stop and look at the signs and pay attention and, and dive a little deeper, <clears throat> excuse me, and, and explore how this new sort of shift that we're going through, this digital shift, this technological shift, how is it going to benefit me? Or, <clears throat> better question, how can I help this technology benefit myself and others. And, mm -hmm. you know, I, I often, I, I love using uh, analogies and metaphors, but I would say like the train is in the station, if we like it or not. Now, if you're on, on the other side of town, you may not know the train is here, but it's still here. Mm -hmm. And so you can choose to get on the train, you could choose to leave the train, you could be in the front car, you could be the conductor, you could decide to get on the back car. Like, that's all up to you. Or you could stand at the station and go, that's cool, but I'm not really interested in that ride. And all of those options are okay. But to be on the other side of town and pretend that the train isn't there, that's what I don't recommend. Know it's mm -hmm. there. Recognize it's there. Ask the questions. Maybe try it out a little bit. And if it's for you, great. And if it's not, that's fine too. But my, my challenge to the audience, to your listeners, and viewers is, you know, educate yourself about this. Internet came, we're in the midst of it. Social media came, we're in the midst of it. But how many of us asked those questions when we first heard about Instagram, first heard about Twitter, first heard about the World Wide Web? Mm -hmm. How many came in to create an environment that was safe for our children? Look at the fallout. Look at the mental health issues we're dealing with after the fact. Are we going to blindly move into Web3 and you know, and not think that there will also be fallout if we do not build with positive intention? No, I, I think you make a great point and I think that's why, you know, taking it back again, it's like who's creating the curriculum and like who's doing what and then how are people educating themselves and ensuring that there's good sources that they can use, ensuring that, you know, there's places for them to go, they can, you know, I 
I also want to ask you, what do you think about the learn and earn model in education? You know, it's interesting because I, I'm actually, I think it's a great model. However, I don't know if it's the motivation mm -hmm. um, that's going to get people to try this technology. I, I, I'm still sort of at a wait and see. I feel where that can really be effective are those individuals that are creators, that are artists, that are looking for means to or access to this space uh, in a way that they can understand it, in a way that they can embrace it to more efficiently create their art, to more impactfully distribute their art or more efficiently distribute their art whatever that is, I feel there's an opportunity there where those individuals would really grab on to learn and earn, learn to earn, learn to earn. Mm -hmm. <laughs> learn and earn, learn to earn both, yes. However, the everyday person, I haven't seen that be mm -hmm. enough of a motivator for individuals to really embrace the technology. Well, thank you so much for your time, Nova, and uh, I'll make sure to follow up with you on how you progress on your journey. Yeah, well thank you for having me, I appreciate it. Thank